Hello and thank you for tuning in again and joining us here on this week's broadcast of The Voice of Revival. I'm so excited to have you with us again for this broadcast. I want to spend a few moments today talking about the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. You know, we spent the last couple episodes here on The Voice of Revival discussing the power of prayer in regards to praying the kingdom of God into a situation when it is concerning praying in English or praying in the natural. But I want to talk to about praying in the Holy Ghost. It is, the Bible tells us in Jude verse number 20 that we are to build ourselves up in our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Spirit of God or praying in unknown tongues is a direct pathway, a direct pipeline from the natural realm through the second heaven and into the very throne room of God. The Bible tells us that when we pray in the Spirit, it is the Spirit of God who prays through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Often when you don't know what to pray, it's the Holy Ghost that prays through you. Often when we don't know what to say in prayer, it's by praying in the Spirit. You know, oftentimes we can say a lot, but not be saying anything. And sometimes when we're praying in our natural tongue, we're praying things that are frivolous. We're praying things that don't necessarily have the weight of heaven upon it. And oftentimes, to really break through and to break into a thing, when the old saints used to say to pray through a thing, we do that by praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, one of God's great generals, John Graham Lake, had one of the greatest miracle ministries on the face of this planet. And it was Dr. Lake that when he had been, he had been requested to come to South Africa, at the turn of the 20th century, God had sent him there and called him to go there and to minister on an apostolic assignment. He had gotten there in the midst of a great outbreak of the bubonic plague. There in Southern Africa, where the plague was running rampant. People were dying left and right. That great plague had broken out there. John Lake walked in the demonstration and the dominion of the presence of God everywhere he went. He came there and said, I'm going to prove to you that the virus dies in my hands. He took his hand and he said, take some of the plague that comes out of the individual when they pass away and they and they vomit. They took some of the vomit and they put it in his hand while looking at it on a microscope. The doctors and the scientists had discovered that the virus was alive after the person would vomit it up, but then they would take that very same specimen. And the minute that Dr. Graham's hand would come in contact with the plague-infested vomit, they would look under the microscope and upon instant contact with his hand, the virus died instantly. The bacteria and the microbes stopped moving around and instantly they were killed by the power of God because of the anointing of God upon his life. This was a man that said, I'll prove this to you because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death. The reason that he walked in that level of dominion and that level of the power of God is because he understood the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. It was Dr. Graham that said himself that I consider the making of my ministry to rest upon the very fact of make, that speaking and praying in unknown tongues was the very making of my ministry, he went on to say. Because when he began to pray, through into the Holy Ghost. He prayed things that could not be uttered, that could not be known by humanity. He allowed himself to have a direct pipeline, a direct connection. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you allow yourself to have a direct connection with the Father himself by praying in the Spirit of God. I'll never forget myself being on the great on a mission field I was there in, in the nation of Haiti. We were doing crusades that week, and I was there with a mentor of mine who's today about 92 years old, one of the last remaining Voice of Healing ministers that are still on this planet. I know we recently said goodbye to the great Morris Sorello, 
as he graduated into glory and to his eternal reward. And I was there in Haiti with one of Dr. Sorello's colleagues, Brother Max Manning, and we were sitting there. And I said to Max, I said to him, what separates the preachers and the ministers that we have today with those that came up in your generation? Brother Manning was a great close personal friend of William Branham, best friend to, to Gordon Lindsay, A.A. A. Allen, Jack Coe, many of the great men of God that God used so powerfully in the voice of healing era. And I said, Brother Max, I said, what is it exactly that separates the ministers that we have today from what we had in your time? What makes them different? Because clearly, clearly there's a difference between what graces our pulpits today what filled those tents in those days. You know, it was the days, I remember, Jack Coe would come and fill the tent. They would line the very front with hospital beds and wheelchairs. And every single wheelchair and hospital bed would be emptied by the power of God. You know, that very same power of God is available to you today, right there where you are, if you could only but learn to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. And praying in the Holy Ghost is how we do that. So there I was in Haiti in that hotel room, and I said to Max, I said, what is it that separates those men from what we have today? And I'll never forget as he spun around there on that, the edge of that bed, and he looked at me and he said, Chad, every one of those men were given to extended periods of prayer and fasting. Or they would fast for 10 and 12 and 14 days at a time, and God would meet with them every time. There in their prayer closet. These men were determined. They were determined to engage the glory of God. And then he spun back around. I figured he was finished. He turned back around to me and he said one more time. And he said, in holiness, you must hate sin. But every one of those men understood the power of praying in the Holy Spirit. If you want to learn how to walk in breakthrough in your life, Learn how to spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And one of those very weapons of our warfare is the weapon of praying in the Spirit of God. You know, it's, I'll, I'll, I got a phone call one day. My phone had rang, and my, I found out that my father had had a stroke or they thought that he had had a stroke. But when I had found out what exactly had happened, I remembered the very hour they told me that it had happened, and I remembered that it was at that specific hour that morning that I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit and driven of God into my prayer closet, and it was there I began to pray and to groan out of the, the innermost part of my spirit. Man, I began to pray and groan in the Holy Spirit. And after I had come out of that prayer closet, it was then that I had received the notification that the doctors had thought he had had a stroke. But at that very moment that it had happened, they had told me, was the very moment I was in my prayer closet praying in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Spirit of God often, the Spirit of God knows how to pray, when to pray, and where to pray. And that's what we have to be in tune with. Praying is just as important as the manner in which we pray. And we have to understand that we ought to probably pray in the Spirit more than we pray in the English. Be in tune with the Holy Ghost. Be in tune with the Spirit of God. You know, it was Smith Wigglesworth that said he showed up there with Dr. Summerall in London, England before World War II. Dr. Summerall being mentored by him had come to his house and had knocked on his door. Wigglesworth had invited him to come over. And he spent about two years there being mentored by him. And he had knocked on his door, and Wigglesworth swings the door open. And Dr. Sumrall standing there on the porch with the, with the newspaper tucked underneath his arm. Wigglesworth looked at him and said, You can come in, but that stays out here on the porch. And Sumrall was a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit disturbed. He wasn't quite sure why Brother Wigglesworth said that 
the newspaper had to stay on the porch. He said, that thing is full of lies. <laughs> Go figure. The fake news of their era. They're on the front page of the newspaper. He said, leave that thing on the porch because it's full of lies. You know, in a midst in an era of a day that we live in today, when fear and panic are everywhere, it seems that we turn on the television and on the news channels and everywhere, it seems that we go. When the world is crying out for you to quarantine yourself, let me encourage you that the very thing you ought be quarantining yourself from is the news media from time to time. Sometimes we ought to quarantine ourselves by what we listen to. And Brother Wigglesworth understood that. And so Dr. Summerall had come to his house and had knocked on his door and he said, you can come in, but that stays on the porch. It's full of lies. And only the word of God and truth are permitted in my home. Dr. Summerall went on to say that when he went into Wigglesworth's home, he would go there twice a week for two years. And they would, he would sit there in his home and listen be imparted to by Brother Wigglesworth, but he would set an egg timer there, Doc, Brother Wigglesworth would do, and they would pray for 30 minutes, and they would read for 30 minutes, and then they would pray for 30 minutes, and read for 30 minutes, and then noon would come, and they would take tea, pray for 30 minutes, and read for 30 minutes, and that would go on all day. But that's the very same man. That's the very reason that that same man, Smith Wigglesworth, raised 12 people from the dead. It's the very same reason that when he would walk out of his house and get on a trolley cart there in London, England, he sat himself down on a seat. A Catholic priest fell onto the floorboard of that London trolley cart crying out, saying, My God, who are you? Your very presence convicts me of my sin. That's the kind of anointing, glory, and dominion that Wigglesworth walked in. That's the kind of glory, anointing, and dominion that John Graham Lake walked in. That's the kind of glory and anointing and dominion that you too can learn to walk in. We all want to talk about what the old timers did and who the old timers were, but we often don't want to do what the old timers did. And if you want to do what the old timers did, if you want to heal the sick and raise the dead like the old timers did, then you've got to do what the old timers did. And what the old timers did is that they were given to fasting and prayer. But most importantly, they were given to praying in the Holy Ghost where they would spend hours on end of doing nothing but praying in the Holy Ghost. And I want to encourage you. God filled you with the Holy Spirit. Not just so you could get some goosebumps. You could have a good feel-good service. He filled you with the Holy Spirit so that He could be your partner. So that He could be your paraclete. Jesus said that when the comforter would come, that word comforter is the Greek word parakletos, which means one that comes up alongside one, one that, that allows you to lean into them in the time of trouble. Because he comes up alongside you, he props himself up against you. He becomes your very support system. The Holy Spirit of God is your very support system. And so when Jesus spoke and said that the Comforter would come, He would be your very, your very support system. If we would only but learn how to allow the Comforter to pray through us. Learn to let the Holy Ghost pray through you. That is the making of a miracle ministry, praying in the Holy Spirit. If you could only grasp that concept, you know, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armor of God, to take the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, to gird your loins with the belt of truth, to take the shield of faith, whereby we shall quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one, to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and to take the sword of, of the Spirit. But it doesn't stop there. The sword of the Spirit being the offensive weapon that you've been given. But the Scriptures don't stop there because the Bible says after Paul mentions taking the sword of the Spirit. You've put on all of your defensive garments, garments the helmet, the breastplate, the belt. You've shod your feet. You've taken the shield of faith. Paul says then take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Then he goes on to say, 
and praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication. You see, your offensive weapons are not just the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, but praying with all supplication and all manner of prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit is the other part of that offensive weapon. By praying in the Holy Ghost, you pray out of the now. The Bible tells us that faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's faith that reaches out of the now, out of the present need. And it reaches up into the heavens. It reaches up and grabs that which is already done. And it brings it down into your not yet. That's what faith does. Faith takes your not yet, but reaches up into the already done and brings it down. And when those two things collide together, that's when the miracle is made. But praying in the Spirit is similar in this. Praying in the Spirit is the prayer that prays out of the right now. It prays out of the mind of the known, and it passes the veil of the second heaven. See, often our prayers can be hindered by the spirit realm. Often our prayers can be hindered by the second heaven. Daniel wrote that he began to pray, and the Bible says, and God sent an angel, and the angel came to Daniel 30 days later. The angel told Daniel that God had heard your prayer the first time you prayed it, but he had been withstood by the prince of Persia. By the prince of Persia. Well, no human prince could hold back an angel of God. Obviously, Daniel was speaking of a principality in power. And so sometimes our prayers in the natural can be hindered in the spirit realm, but not when we pray in the Holy Ghost. Because when we pray in the Holy Ghost, the Bible tells us that all, we are speaking the language of angels. When we are praying in the Holy Ghost, it is known only to God, that we don't even know what it is that we're praying for. But our spirit man knows because our spirit man is in tune with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is praying through us. And we're praying and we're piercing that veil of the second heaven. And our prayers go directly to the throne room in the third heaven, there before Jehovah himself. The enemy has no idea what you're praying when you pray in the Holy Ghost. It is a top secret supernatural prayer code that is not able to be intercepted by any force of darkness. It's not able to be understood by humanity because it's known only by God. And it pierces that veil and it reaches up into heaven's already done and it obtains the promise and brings it into your not yet. If you want to see miracles in your life, learn to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you want to see God move on your behalf, pray in the Holy Spirit. Before I'll go and minister, minister in these great miracle meetings and crusades where God will move and touch by the power of His Spirit. People are healed and delivered and set free and wheelchairs are emptied out. Before I'll do any of that, I'll spend time, often hours, praying in nothing but the Holy Spirit so that my spirit man can be in tune with what the Holy Spirit and what the Father is saying. I want to encourage you, spend some time praying in the Holy Ghost. And if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit and without the ability to speak in other tongues, God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit today. Jesus died so that you could be filled with the Holy Ghost. He died, was buried, and rose from the dead so that you could be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's Ephesians 2 that tells us that God made you, that's right, you, to be a habitation of Him through His Spirit. He wants to fill you with His Spirit. And when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll receive the gift, the ability to speak in unknown tongues. That's your supernatural prayer language that allows you to build up your most holy faith, like Jude tells us in that epistle. We build ourselves up in the most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Don't miss out. Don't miss out on what God has for you. Learn to pierce the heavenlies. Learn to pray in the Holy Ghost. I hope that this broadcast has blessed you. I pray that you would learn 
the concepts and the principles that I've taught in these last few episodes in regards to prayer, learning to pray the Lord's Prayer, learning to pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, learning to pray in the Holy Spirit, because as you learn to pray in the Holy Spirit, God is going to take you from glory to glory. Praying in the Holy Ghost will take you to that next step in God. Listen, folks, thank you for watching so much here at The Voice of Revival. And I want to encourage you to send in your prayer requests. I'm going to come into agreement with you for every prayer need that you may have. So send us in your prayer requests. Send us in your praise reports. If you have a praise report, how God has blessed you through this ministry or what He's done in your life, I want to hear from you because He's a good God and He's there to bless you. He wants to touch you at every point of your life. This is Chad McDonald, and you're watching The Voice of Revival. Until next time.
worship you. I worship you. Thank you for watching Voice of Revival with Chad McDonald. The Voice of Revival broadcast is the media ministry outreach of Revival Fire World Ministries and is made possible by the prayers and faithful support of partners like you. All gifts and contributions are tax deductible where allowed by law. For more information or to give, visit us on the web at www.thevoiceofrevival.com.